Welcome back to the Course Creation Incubator. I'm Gina Onativia, your digital course consultant and coach, here to get you fired up for your course creation and marketing. How do I set myself up for success? That's what many of you are probably thinking right now, or a lot of course creators want to know out of the gate. I was talking to a course creator the other day who was building her audience. She's been building her audience for about two years. And she admitted to me, if I had to do it again, I would do it differently. Because she jumped in without really knowing what the end game was, what her outcome was in terms of her course. I want you to avoid any of that course creation regret and start off in the right way, what I consider the right way. I also want you to avoid decision fatigue where you feel like you're making so many dang decisions, you just want to stop. I mean, sometimes I find it tough to make decisions when that fatigue sets in. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely a mom boss when I need to be. But when it comes to my home life, sometimes I just say to my hubby Alex, you decide. Like at the end of the day, when we're trying to figure out dinner and no one wants to make a decision, it drives me bonkers. So I'm here to help you avoid that kind of decision fatigue by keeping it simple and going through three decisions today that will really set you up for success. Now, these are three decisions I want you to think about if you're building your course for the first time. And if you've already built your course or you're in the midst of it, and maybe you said, well, Gina, I already made some of these decisions. Listen to this episode with a new perspective. What would you change about your decisions or maybe alter about your plans to build your course? All right, let's dive into those decisions, starting with decision one. What's the transformation that you want to provide with your online course? Instead of just saying, what's your course idea? I want to take this a step further. Where do you plan to take your ideal student? Now, I talk about transformations a lot because they're so important. Why? Because this is why your folks are going to buy. No transformation, no sale. You're promising your students a result and really the emotion behind it. Let me give you a real life example. James wrote to me about creating an elite soccer training. Now I'm gonna brainstorm a bit, and James, if you're listening, you could tell me if I got this right. So the transformation that James could provide is teaching high school soccer students nutrition education, mindset development, and high performance habits to feel confident as a player and have fun in the process. Now, the vision here may be able to play soccer in college or even make the pros, but that can be part of an imagine if statement, because listen, that's too lofty a promise for the transformation. Now, the nutrition mindset and habits, that's something that's tangible. Parents want that for their kids. I want that for Tristan. So when you're making this decision about your transformation, ask yourself, is it tangible? Can I deliver? Is it something my people really want or I just kind of want to provide it? <laughs> I get a lot of course creators who are trying to decide what course to create because they have multiple ideas. If you're listening right now, you might have multiple ideas. You have a lot of content and a lot of courses you want to put out. I encourage you to think about where's the biggest demand and go with that and then make that your passion project. All right. Decision number two, how will you build and grow your audience? Most of the time for new course creators, they talk about a social media following, how many people you have on Instagram or on Facebook. Here's the thing. I want you to have an audience that you own. I want you building a list so you can do email marketing. Now, social media presence is important too. People want to see that you're an expert. You can add value. You're sharing your expertise and establishing yourself as an authority. So don't totally throw away social media. It's important. However, you've heard this before on this podcast, Facebook could go down at any minute. Insta could go down, Pinterest. I want you to have more control over your audience and that means growing your email list. And to have an audience of your own, you've got to be list building. And if you don't have a lead magnet or an opt-in on your website, I want you to have one immediately. Something simple that you can get up there. Every time I talk to course creators, they've got a PDF or a two page PDF, like a checklist or a list of questions. And I'll say to them, Go check out your blog, find the one that says three ways or five steps, convert that into a checklist and make it a PDF. Or if you record a, a podcast and you're like, you know what, if I got this transcribed, I could take out this chunk and make it a guide. Do that. I don't want you creating something magnificent from scratch. I want you repurposing. 
because I made the mistake when I first started out of thinking that downloads your opt-ins had to be freaking incredible new information. I felt like I had to blow your mind with value in terms of what I was providing. And I wasted a shit ton of time creating these brand new content pieces. Cause you gotta remember, I came from Tony Robbins world. We created some amazing content for him as a team, as a content department. Now, Tony had a team of 12 people in that department. I don't know how many are in now, but when, back in the day, there was 12 of us. So of course we're creating these incredible content pieces. That was appropriate for him and it wasn't appropriate for me. And it's certainly not appropriate for you if you're just starting out. So leverage what you've got. So you're gonna decide how to build that audience and what simple PDF worksheet you're gonna use. And I know you've got that because you're teaching right now. You're putting your expertise out there. If you're a coach or a consultant, or if you're doing a side hustle, you've got that content. Put it up on your website, ask people for their first name and their email, set up a simple confirmation email so you can get people on your list. Then you're gonna start putting out your weekly content. For now, get that lead magnet up, whatever piece you've got. So for example, let's go back to our James example. On his website, he's got a free guide, Eat to Compete, and I think this is great. And you wanna make sure your soccer player is properly fueled to perform at their best during training sessions and games. I think this is a great idea because I've got a soccer player in training, right? And this guide is a quick win, information I'm sure James already had, and it shows his expertise, and I'm sure it leaves parents wanting more. Well, if this helps my kid just for a simple PDF, Imagine what's possible if they actually train with James. It's giving them that teaser, leaves them wanting more, and it's a quick win. Because here's the other thing. A lot of times I see lead magnets where people offer eBooks or a ton of information. Then what tends to happen is people get overwhelmed from the onset, and then they're not gonna wanna continue with you because they think, wow, if this person is overwhelming me already, I've lost. I'm already lost, I've lost the game. I probably won't make it through. I have experts that I don't reach out to because they talk over my head and I feel like I'm not smart enough. Please don't make your people feel like they are not smart enough for your content. We wanna love on them, grab them, grab their attention, especially in that first phase when you're building your audience. So think about that lead magnet and the consistent content you're gonna provide once they opt in and doing those weekly nurtures. I was talking to a client the other day who used to have a blog and he was talking mostly to his current clients. And I said to him, well, as you continue to grow your audience, and if you're listening right now, you are growing your audience because we want to sell to them. We want to put our course out to them. I was talking to a new client the other day who used to write a weekly blog. And he was saying that that blog was mostly good for current clients. And I said to him, well, as you continue to grow your audience, you're gonna want that weekly nurture. You're gonna want that content out there. And if you're listening right now, you are growing your audience. If you wanna put out your course, you've gotta build your audience. So you're gonna put out a blog or a podcast or videos to nurture them. I had a client, another client who took the summer off from recording anything new. We ended up pulling out old content and recycling some classic stuff according to trends. Like we put new spins on it and what's happening in the world because we didn't wanna miss a week. We didn't wanna go dark because we know how important nurturing is and constantly reaching out to that new audience, so critical. Okay, so to bring decision number two home, how are you gonna build your audience? How are you gonna love on them? What's that simple PDF you're gonna put up? So, so, so important when you're starting out as a new course creator. And hell, if you're an existing course creator and you've maybe lapsed on your content, Think about how you can pick it back up. No judgment here. And is your PDF working? Because that's the other thing. You wanna make sure that you're checking in, you're checking your metrics. So James has this nutrition PDF, parents responding. Are they taking the next step with him? Are they opening it up? Are they clicking through? Is it good lead gen? We call it a lead gen because it's hopefully a good lead for you to then follow up. If it's not working for you, then I want you to try something else. Decision number three, and I left the big one for last. Decide how your course will fit into your overall business and life. Now there's a lot that a course can do for you. It can expand your reach. It could be another offering. It can lead to different opportunities like I talked about last week with Susie. But you wanna decide first and foremost 
how it's all going to fit in. This is the first question that I ask a new client or a new student, because one of the reasons that new course creators often fail is when they realize I don't have time for this, or I don't know how this fits into my life or into my business. And all of a sudden it stops becoming a priority and the course falls by the wayside. I've spoken to so many people who started courses on courses, but then didn't really have time to work on them. So they still don't have an online program. Let me give you some examples of scenarios of course creators who are making it work and making courses fit into their lifestyle. I had Susie on last week, who's a newborn sleep consultant. So Susie's still doing her consulting. She's still doing her one-on-one -on -one calls, but she has a nice mix now of different offerings with her course and her workshops. I have a done for you client who does a lot of consulting. He's looking to put out his expertise to groups and have a smaller level course that will then lead to some lead gen for his bigger groups. If you're a coach, I brought up James before. James is a soccer coach. He actually has a group of trained coaches behind them. So his small course might be a good feeder into working with one of his coaches. And if you're in a nine to five, how is your course going to play into what you do for work? Are you going to plan out different promotions based on how much you're working throughout the year? And hopefully your work complements your course. How are you going to make time for it? How are you going to make it a priority? And who do you need to get buy-in from? Maybe it's from your family or your business partners. I've worked with different clients who had to get buy-in from their business partners or their partner didn't want to do it. So they did it on their own and they went off and did a separate course. That's okay too. By the way, equally important is knowing that you have the right audience. Here's a sidebar. So I want you to check out episode three, find your buyers, not tire kickers. If you haven't listened already for more on that, to make sure you have buyers and not just people on the fence or people who are never going to buy. If you're unsure about your audience, pause, listen to that episode, get that dialed in. I think it's important to ask yourself these questions early on and visualize. So in that habits episode, I talked about visualizing success. Well, I want you to start with the end in mind and visualize the success of your course. What does that look like for you? So you're setting it up so you're not just trying to figure it out as you go along. There's other things you can figure out, by the way. You can figure out your price point or your title. These are things you can figure out later, but these base questions and decisions are going to set you up for the long term. Now, you might struggle with these and say, Gina, I don't know what I want for the course or I don't know how it fits into the business. Well, sit down with a friend or a colleague or message me and just say, okay, I think it looks like this. What do you think? And maybe it starts with something and then builds to something else. I love people who come to me and say, I've got a two year goal of this two year outcome. Then by five years, I'd like it to look like this. Then by 10 years like this, don't be afraid to put benchmarks against what you want for your course and how it integrates into your business and life. All right. I hope these three decisions were helpful. Drop me a line on Insta at course creation boutique and tell me what decisions you've made or where you're stuck. Next week, I'm bringing on Paige Schulte, who I've talked about on this show, one of my favorite course creators because she has incredible course one and two, because of the way she has phased her selling and her different promotions that she's done with the course. You're not going to want to miss that interview. So check it out next week. Please rate and review this episode, especially if you're listening on Apple podcasts until next week, go create, be you and be brilliant and get it done.